Welcome back to George's page. We're reporting live outside of Louisiana. I'm leave. How's the weather looking for you here for today? Pretty good. Pretty good? I know it looks a little bad right now, but pretty soon it should be all right. It'll clear up quick. Right. Come on, meteorologist Malia. We got work to do. All right, Malia, you ready to do this haircut? Me? Actually, I, actually I'm going to be doing it, but the thing behind this, whenever you have, whenever you have any kind of questions, make sure mm -hmm. you ask me. That way I can explain to you and you can have a really good understanding. So do you know what kind of haircut we're going to be doing today? Drop fade. Drop fade? I don't know. Did you ask him what kind of haircut he wants? I don't know. You got to always <laughs> ask what kind of haircut they want. Consultation, guys. Consultation. We already asked him what he wanted, and he does want like more mohawk slash burst fade, but it's not really going to be a mohawk because it's going to come down to a V, and it's not going to be a burst fade because a burst fade, I will still have this edge up right here to be able to line it up. So it's kind of right in between those two. So what is step number one? Step number one is I'm going to go ahead and debulk everything down. That way I can start off with a clean canvas and really see what I want to be doing. Okay. I didn't even know the clippers were on there, that they're that quiet. Yeah, that's why I love this clipper so much. Like the Wall Seniors, like they're the quietest clippers ever. Next to the Andes, Andes Masters. What are you debulking with? I'm using a number four right now. So why did you decide to use a number four? The reason I'm using the number four is because I think we're going to leave the top a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So I really want to leave the parada ridge as dark as possible to really help everything blend in together. All right. So now that we debulked, I'm going to go ahead and use my trimmer. And I'm going to create my first guideline. And I want to use the corner of his eye as a reference point to know where to begin at. That way, whenever I move on to the other side, I can base my guideline off the corner of his eye as well. How do you know like where to start it? Like you just always base it off the eyebrow or? No, the reason I knew where to start at was because I looked at his parietal ridge and the top of his ear. And that let me know how much room I actually have to fade. So in order to be able to create a fade within this section, I don't really have that much space, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to keep it as low as possible. But then again, I needed to pop out a little bit more. That's why I went with what I went with. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. One of the main things, always make sure you cut behind the ear as well. So after I use the trimmer to create my first initial guideline, I'm gonna go in with the shaver. But it's very important that whenever you use the shaver, you wanna stay right beneath it. So instead of going all the way up here, you wanna stay a quarter inch right below it. And after that, I'm gonna go back in with the shaver. I'm gonna start at that line that I created with the trimmer. And now I'm gonna simply slide down with it. And that pretty much just faded out that shaver line for me. So now I don't even have to worry about it. So what are you doing next? And I'm gonna go in with the one and a half part with the lever open and I'm gonna create my next foundation line. And this is gonna really help me understand where I wanna stop with the fade. So at the beginning, I debulked, right? Mm -hmm. With the number four. But now, like I said, his parietal ridge runs right in this area. I wanna make sure I don't go past the parietal ridge to be able to get my square silhouette. So with the one and a half, I'm creating this line and that's exactly where I'm gonna be stopping at with the fade. So now we literally have this much room to be able to create a fade and create gradiency. Now we've got this whole bottom section faded out. Did that make sense? You, you're not lost, you know what we're doing? Yep. Okay, so now we gotta fade out this line by the Parada Ridge, right? Yes. And essentially we debulked everything with the number four. So what should we use now? Two. Man, you're really getting that eye. But you know, but just in case you don't have that eye yet, we're gonna play it safe and put a number three on here and see what that does. Okay. Literally going off the head. I'm not curving in, I'm going off the head. Okay. So that really didn't take out the line at all. So like Malia said over there, we're gonna use the number two. So with the number two now, lever open. Start trying to take out the line, and I think that's doing it. So now within this area, it's still looking a little dark, right? But we're never really gonna worry about this too much. I'm gonna worry about it once we go back in detail. Before I go back in detail this whole thing, cause clearly we still have so many different imperfections, right? A lot of imperfections. But I'm not gonna waste time trying to detail as I go. I'm gonna move on to the next step, which would be what Malia. Lana. Huh? Lana. I don't know. Yeah, they said a one. It's like, uh, no, I try again. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and edge him up. I wanna keep his hairline more natural. 
but at the same time clean up a lot of the little baby hairs he has within this area. You are so dang close to his eyebrow, I'd be scared. Yeah, I am pretty scared. <laughs> Now whenever it comes to the C cup, I'm definitely going to make them a little bit more defined and dig in a little bit more to really give them a nice crisp edge and make the fade pop out. Okay, so I already did this side and everything, so now let's match up. That's crazy, the difference between the side you're done with and the side you haven't yeah. detailed. Big time, man. This side before it was detailed, it looked like this. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that the top is cut and everything, mm -hmm. what do we have left to do? Detail. Detail. And basically all I'm going to be doing whenever I detail, literally I'm going to go back through my same steps all over again. Beginning with my trimmer at the bottom, but this time instead of having flat, I'm really going to be tilting it out at a 90 degree angle and just going in between into each individual hair. And then I'm going to switch on to my clippers and do the same thing, work my way up. And just like that, Malia, does that make sense? Yes. I know it was a lot of problem solving, right? But literally, it's so many different problems that you got to solve constantly whenever you're fading. But once you learn how to figure out this problem, once you learn that equation for it, everything becomes so much easier. But what do you think about this haircut? I like it, I think it looks good. It's not supposed to get like really bad until like 1.30 it looks like is where we're gonna be like in, in, in the bad part. Cause the wind's blowing so hard. Fine, mom, don't, don't worry about us, we're, we're fine.